today to talk about how balance, uh, structure, and overall conformation affects performance in horses. And so we're gonna start off today talking about this horse right here and evaluate his balance. And generally speaking, when we evaluate a horse for balance, uh, we're basically looking to make sure that all of their parts fit together. Um, we looked at that horse can equally divide into sections of three. Um, <coughs> in this particular horse, uh, what I'd like to go through and do with you um, is talk about how you can start off determining whether or not a horse is balanced uh, and how you can break down uh, each individual section of the horse and evaluate that correctly. Uh, anytime we talk about evaluating balance, you're going to start off and talk about the angulation of a horse's shoulder. The angulation of a horse's shoulder determines many things in terms of that horse's performance ability. Um, we like to start off and talk from the midpoint of that horse's wither to the point of his shoulder. And we look at this line right here uh, in relation to the point of the horse's elbow, and we're looking for a degree of approximately 45 degrees. Uh, we can certainly uh, see some varying degrees there, uh, generally thought to, to be 45 to 55 degrees. Obviously, the, the smaller that angle, uh, 40 to 45 degrees, the more laid back that shoulder is going to be. Uh, and we'll explain how that's going to affect that horse here in a little bit. Uh, but if we start off first and evaluate a horse's shoulder, um, we can then go ahead and talk about, first of all, uh, their neck. And I like to evaluate horses from a ratio standpoint. Um, and early on when you're evaluating horses, you may actually stop and divide out each section of that horse. Uh, so if we, if we go from that same midpoint of that horse's wither and work from the pole right directly in between that horse's ear to the midpoint, and then we measure from the throat latch to where their neck ties into the point of their shoulder, we would like to see that be a ratio of two to one. And so your top length here should be a length of two, your bottom length should be a length of one. And you can see with this horse, uh, he's fairly close to that. Uh, short of pulling out a measuring stick, uh, we're gonna say that he uh, has an adequate ratio uh, in his neck area. As we move on back, we're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, the horse's top line or his back. And we're gonna measure from that same midpoint of his wither to the point of his loin, uh, where his back ties into his croup. Uh, we're gonna measure that area, and then we're gonna go from right behind the point of the elbow to the flank, okay? And those two areas should also measure as a ratio of two to one. The only difference here being that we're gonna flip-flop those. You should see a length of two on the horse's underline and a length of one on the horse's top line. With that being said, what I'd like to do uh, is stop and just quickly explain what would happen if we started out with the shoulder angle that deviated from that normal or desirable 45 degree angle. Uh, when we do that, if we were to take this horse and change his shoulder angle, uh, let's say first of all the more common thing that we see is a horse that's a little more upright in their shoulder angle or a horse that's going to approach say a 60 degree shoulder angle versus a 45 degree angle. That's gonna be a horse that we would, we would term to be somewhat straight uh, in their shoulder angle. And when we do that, that's going to change several things about that horse. First and foremost, it's going to make their neck shorter than our desirable two to one ratio. Okay, we're probably gonna see something that's a little bit closer to a one and a half, in extreme cases, even a one to one ratio in measuring the length of that horse's neck because we would essentially be moving this point right here and this point right here, this direction, okay? Um, and we have some examples of horses later uh, that we'll talk to you about and show you uh, how that affects that horse's overall conformation. From that point, if we straighten that shoulder angle to that degree, the other thing that you're going to see is a difference in the length of that horse's top line, okay? Um, obviously, if we move the midpoint of that horse's wither forward, we're going to lengthen uh, that horse's top line, and you're gonna see a loss of some strength over that horse's back. Um, so uh, you can see right there and that, that there are some effects from a horse's shoulder angle in just simply how you view their overall balance. Um, we're certainly going to address here a little bit later um, how that shoulder angle 
affects their ability to move. 